Bruh, did you see the cover of the new One Punch Man 192, bruh? It's absolutely physics breaking, my dude. Saitama is bench pressing two whole black holes, Brobius Strip. It's so interesting and so sciencey, in fact, that today we're devoting an entire episode to breaking this feat of physics down for all you power scalers out there. But before we begin, of course, I'd like to talk to you about CrossFit. Now, CrossFit is a like what? Now why? I saw a call. Saitama, One Punch Man, or Baldy has shown us some truly ridiculous feats of strength, from sneezing away half of Jupa Jupe to literally punching backwards through time. But the cover of issue 192 has to be near the top of all of these physics-y feats. Now, some dweebazoids on Reddit have already done some work in mathing out how cool this would actually be, but we're gonna start from first principles you and I, and go a little bit further. And then I can flex on them? Yes, Arya, then you can flex on them. I gave her body new muscles, and so she's gonna teach you about strength later while looking all hot. You're gonna enjoy it. First of all, when I say physics breaking, it's not clickbait. Who am I, Riddle? Black holes are the most extreme objects in the universe, but they aren't really objects, like say, Saitama's head is an object. Black holes are spherical, but they aren't spheres. They look like they have an edge, but they don't have a surface. Black holes are more like three-dimensional holes in space-time, not dumbbells. So you wouldn't be able to attach anything to them, let alone use those attachments to move them. So to get anywhere with this image, we need to do some anime apologetics and make some Newtonian stipulations about these relativistic objects. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna assume that the two black holes are just solid spheres with an actual surface, even though they don't have those surfaces. But we can't get their masses, and therefore an idea of Saitama's true strength, without further insight into what black holes are. That insight comes from 1916, and German physicist Karl Schwarzschild, sorry Germany, he was using Einstein's field equations and trying to find an exact solution to them for a spherically symmetric, non-rotating body. Out of this effort came the Schwarzschild radius, sorry, which defined the radius at which the escape velocity from a body like this is equal to the speed of light. The radius at which, therefore, no information can escape the event horizon. Now, if we take all of this and the Schwarzschild radius and all of our assumptions, we can therefore use the equation to back calculate mass of each black hole and then get a true idea of Saitama's strength. Now, of course, this all sounds like it's gonna take a lot of calculating, so I'll give you a second to get your calculators, Brobius. Then we'll be right back. Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and millennial Bill Nye, Kyle Hill. You know, being an avid indoorsman and sci-fi entist, I certainly do not have enough time to get all the hip, artisanal, cool guy stuff that I need in my life. Yes, I go outside sometimes. I need to feel like I'm with it. That's why I use the sponsor of today's video, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods each month. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US of A. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more based on a preference quiz that you fill out. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but only costs you a fraction of that. If you join Bespoke Post like me, you'll get a box assigned to you, and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what's inside to decide whether or not you want to keep it, swap it for a different box, or just skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you really want. This month, I picked the Slash and Flame boxes, which contain an eminently useful Japanese-style Nata tool for field clearing and cutting, and a stylish, personal concrete fireplace for that indoor toastin' and s'more roastin', respectively. If you want 20% off your first box of awesome, go down into the description or go to this URL and use the offer code KYLE20 at checkout. Look, I use this stuff every single day and it hasn't failed me yet. And I chop a lot of things. Description, KYLE20 at checkout. You're welcome, bespoke post. Stuff for you. According to a study about building humanoid robots, the average Japanese male hand is 84 millimeters wide. Sure, why not? 
By visual comparison, then, it looks like the radius of each black hole is about two hands wide, or 168 millimeters. When we put this radius in meters into the Schwarzschild equation along with the speed of light, Newton's gravitational constant, we can solve for mass. Doing so reveals a brotastic bench press, after multiplying by two, of 200 trillion trillion kilograms. That's like bench pressing 15 Earths on each end of your bar. But is this value truly strength? Now, I've done a lot of nerdy calculating in my day, and I find that other nerds who try to do this kind of thing usually stop at the first figure and the first units that they get without asking if those numbers or units actually make sense. We call this a sanity check when we're doing math and engineering and physics. So is kilograms, what you see on weights at the gym, actually a good indication of someone's strength? I think it may not actually be. It's not telling the whole story. It's like the webcomic before Murata gets to it. It's, uh, it's missing uh, something. A better indication of Saitama's true strength will not just be kilograms, it will be what he does with those kilograms, specifically how far he moves them. In physics terms, this is called work, or force times distance, which will give us a unit of energy. Note here that force is kind of like weight in our case, which means that it will depend on gravity, which we'll get to later. But you have an intuitive sense of work, right? It takes more of your body's energy to move a weight a further distance under some gravitational field, right? Well, that's what we're gonna do now. And I don't know who, if you heard me earlier, but uh, I've already done over a thousand of these bad boys. It's like it's nothing at this point. Look at you, I'm standing there, thinking I can't do a thousand of these bicep curls with a 10 pound weight. I got some news for you, Buster Brown. You can sit there till the cows come home. I'll keep curling. Oh, I'll keep curling. I'll curl all day. I'll curl more than the Milwaukee curling team on ice, which is how curling goes. So we're back to issue 192. Calculating the work, thankfully, will be easy. If we assume Saitama is roughly Vitruvian and that he's doing a regular bench press, then he will raise both black holes half as high as his arms are long, with each arm being half his height, which we know canonically. Assuming further that he is doing all this under Earth's gravitational acceleration, the work Saitama does, lifting two black holes just once, is 800 trillion trillion joules. We're talking about Saitama's arms each being able to output the same amount of energy as the sun does each second. Enough energy to blow Earth's atmosphere off into space. Huh, sound familiar? And if OPM is just lifting, bruh, doing multiple reps over time, yeah? Then he's expending an even more incomprehensible amount of energy. But like we said, Brohim, black holes are special objects, yo. So it might make more sense to think about all of this in a different way. Nah, mean? Arya, I need a calculator for this next part. Can you muscle lecture them for a second? Thanks. When discussing strength, it's important to remember that it is not just about how much a person can lift, but how much they can lift relative to their body size. Let's say, for example, we have two Kevins who can both lift 150 pounds. One of these Kevins weighs 100 pounds. The other Kevin weighs 200 pounds. Kevins are a spectrum. Which of these Kevins is stronger? We may be tempted to say that because they can lift the same amount, their strength is the same. However, the smaller Kevin is lifting 150% of his body weight, and the larger Kevin is only lifting 75% of his. Therefore, the smaller Kevin is stronger. Never underestimate a tiny Kevin. This is also why sports such as weightlifting and powerlifting are divided into weight classes and scored based on how much a person can lift relative to their body size. So the next time you're in the gym and you see that huge guy warming up with your max, just remember that because he can lift more than you does not necessarily mean that he is stronger. Also, he probably skips like day. I told you she was strong. Now, black holes have so much gravity that another way to think about Saitama's true strength is not just lifting some weight, but actually keeping his body 
through a bench press-like extension from falling in to these black holes. Now, black holes don't have surfaces, like we mentioned, but they can be imagined to have a kind of Newtonian surface gravity with the right variables. So if we take our measurements again and more physicisty equations, we get a surface gravity, more Newtonian surface gravity of these black holes in this issue as they are pictured of 100,000 trillion meters per second per second. In G terms, that is 13 quadrillion Gs. That means in this cover, Saitama is training under a G load that someone like Goku wouldn't be even able to pronounce. Just moving his body away from the vent horizon of these black holes like he is apparently doing easily would make him the strongest S-Class hero and stronger than Goku. Get mad about it in the comments. You won't. Of course, none of this is even remotely possible. In addition to not having surfaces, the black holes that we see on the cover have accretion disks, which we know can get to many millions of degrees. This means that they would actually vaporize the bar, the gym, Baldi's clothes, everything. But as a story that's a parody of strength itself, One Punch Man does show some fantastic and sciency displays of it. And I love that. Until next time. Okay, they're gone. Like I was saying about CrossFit. Now, CrossFit is a community-based system where when you wait, what, why? <laughs> Thanks so much to all the nerds over at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat that we might attach a yellow or red cape to, if you want videos early, if you want behind the scenes bloopy bloops, if you want our private discord where you can message me at any time of night, thanks overseas people, that's patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. You also get private live streams with me and your name on every single video if you support us just enough. And look at how many people are already doing that. I have no idea how I'm gonna pass this. Honorable mentions for one Punch Man recently. This, this cover is mind blowing in the best way. I love how they incorporate legitimately sciencey things, like not just, ma not magical feats of strength, but like blowing off the surface of Ju Jupiter and making it look kind of right. I love that. But Tatsumaki has to get some honorable mentions for what she was doing when she was going all psychic tornado on Saitama's booty lifting up a, a, a mass of rocks that would be otherwise unthinkable for any S-tier hero or class, whatever they say in the translation. I didn't improvise all that, thanks for watching.